is the second lecture of the four lecture series on acoustics. In the last lecture, which was the first one, we considered sound generation and propagation, various types of wave motion, in particular harmonic waves. So, it was pointed out that the elasticity of the medium is a very important aspect. Sound waves are mechanical waves, the particles of the medium vibrate and therefore, elastic properties determine how the wave will propagate in the medium. Uh, we also considered an equation, a very general equation for wave motion for propagation along the x axis. This equation was a partial differential equation in x and t. We considered its general solution, which were in the form of the solution of the combination x minus v t or x plus v t giving rise to waves moving along the positive direction of x axis or the negative direction of x axis. No other form of the solution is admissible for this equation. Then we consider waves of different types, the transverse waves, where the particle motion is perpendicular to the direction of propagation, it is in the transverse plane, can have any direction, but always remaining in the transverse plane. A typical example was pointed out as the vibrations of a stretched string, sitar string for example, and the longitudinal waves where the particle motion is along the direction of propagation. This is a very common thing because the sound waves in air are longitudinal. Then we considered in particular harmonic waves because the particles would vibrate the most of the time they vibrate simple harmonically because the force restoring force due to elasticity comes out to be proportional to the displacement. We considered various properties of the harmonic waves their main characteristics. Now, in the present lectures this one we shall consider principle of superposition formation of beats and the stationary waves. We shall consider phenomena of reflection, refraction and diffraction of sound, principle of superposition. Let us now see how the resultant of two or several waves is evaluated. Since the equation of wave motion is linear and is homogeneous, therefore, the displacement psi and its derivatives occur always in the form of first degree. Thus, if psi 1 and psi 2 are any two solutions of the wave equation, any combination like a 1 psi 1 plus a 2 psi 2 is also a solution where a 1 and a 2 are arbitrary constants. From this we conclude that we may superpose any number of individual solutions to form new functions, which are also solutions in themselves. Therefore, in general, it may be stated that when two or more wave, tra wave trains are superposed, the resultant displacement at any point is equal to the vector sum of the individual displacements there. This is known as the principle of superposition. Thus, psi will be equal to psi 1 plus psi 2. If psi 1 and psi 2 are two displacements and psi is the corresponding resultant displacement. You see, this principle has wide applicability. Let us consider superposition of two harmonic waves moving in the same direction. Let psi 1 equal to a cos of omega 1 t minus k 1 x plus alpha 1 
for the first wave traveling along the positive direction of x axis and the other one psi 2 equal to a times cos of omega 2 t minus k 2 x plus alpha 2 this is the second one. So, these two are there alpha 1 and alpha 2 are arbitrary initial phases. Now, according to the principle of superposition the resultant displacement is given by psi is equal to psi 1 plus psi 2 just vector sum this gives a times cos of omega 1 t minus k 1 x plus alpha 1 plus a times cos of omega 2 t minus k 2 x plus alpha 2 this gives 2 a times cos of omega 2 minus omega 1 by 2 times t minus k 2 minus k 1 by 2 times x plus alpha 2 minus alpha 1 by 2 multiplied by cos of omega 2 plus omega 1 by 2 times t minus k 2 plus k 1 by 2 times x plus alpha 2 plus alpha 1 by 2. This is a general form of the expression for the two waves of equal amplitude both having amplitude a progressing in the same direction both were progressing along the direction of positive x axis superposing on each other. We shall make its use in the following. Let us consider the phenomena of beats. This phenomena occurs when two wave trains of nearly equal frequencies omega 1 is almost equal to omega 2, k 1 is almost equal to k 2 when such waves they overlap. Again using principle of superposition psi is equal to psi 1 plus psi 2. This is the same expression as I had a little while ago, but now consider this equation with initial phases at set to 0 just for simplicity. If we put alpha 1 and alpha 2 equal to 0 we get for psi which is equal to psi 1 plus psi 2 2 a times cos of omega 2 minus omega 1 by 2 times t minus k 2 minus k 1 by 2 times x multiplied by cos of omega t plus omega 1 by 2 times t minus k 2 plus k 1 by 2 times x. This equation represents a wave motion determined by the factor cos of omega 2 plus omega 1 by 2 times t minus k 2 plus k 1 by 2 times x. Remember the frequencies are nearly equal omega 1 is almost equal to omega 2, k 1 is almost equal to k 2. Essentially this factor is cos of omega t minus k x with the amplitude usually the amplitude is constant, but here in this case the amplitude is 2 a times cos of omega 2 minus omega 1 by 2 times t minus k 2 minus k 1 by 2 times x. If we put omega 2 equal to omega 1 and we put k 2 equal to k 1 this will be cos of 0 which is 1 and the amplitude will be just equal to a constant value 2 a, but here we find this is the expression which varies with t and also x. The nature of this wave motion can be easily understood by analyzing the amplitude term as a function of t as a function of time at some fixed point. Let us take x is equal to 0 just for simplicity does not affect any physics. The amplitude is then 2 a times cos of omega 2 minus omega 1 by 2 times t this oscillates with time between the maximum value 2 a and the minimum value 0. The amplitude is maximum when the cos factor is equal to plus minus 1. This means at times t equal to 0 
uh, 2 pi upon omega 2 minus omega 1 or 4 pi upon omega 2 minus omega 1 or 6 pi upon omega 2 minus omega 1 or in terms of frequency at times t equal to 0, 1 upon nu 2 minus nu 1, 2 upon nu 2 minus nu 1, 3 upon nu 2 minus nu 1, where nu 1 is omega 1 by 2 pi, nu 2 is omega 2 by 2 pi. Similarly, the amplitude is minimum when the cos factor is 0. This means the argument is like pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2 or 5 pi by 2. That is at t equal to pi upon omega 2 minus omega 1 or 3 pi upon omega 2 minus omega 1 or 5 pi upon omega 2 minus omega 1 like this or in terms of frequency at times t equal to 1 upon twice of omega 2 minus omega 1 or 3 upon twice the omega 2 minus omega 1 or 5 upon twice the omega 2 minus omega 1 these types. We find that there is a minimum amplitude between any two consecutive maxima. You see the time interval between any two consecutive maxima or minima is 1 upon omega 2 minus omega 1. With an interval of this a maxima repeats or a minima repeats. Hence, the frequency of appearance of maxima or minima of this amplitude is nu 2 minus nu 1. This phenomena, the maxima and minima constitute beats and therefore, we say that the number of beats per second is nu 2 minus nu 1, just the difference of the two frequencies. Consider uh, uh, this figure. This figure is an envelope of this transient amplitude modulation resulting from the superposition of the waves A and B of slightly different frequencies. If the frequency of the waves is in the audible range, one can hear it, there will be waxing and waning of sound which is detectable by the air. So, this is a very interesting phenomena whenever we have two sources of slightly different frequencies and they are sounded together. For example, if the two tuning forks say of frequencies 500 vibrations per second and 502 vibrations per second, a difference of two, if they are sounded together, we expect two beats per second. This means in a second the sound will be maximum at two instants and minimum at two instants this is very interesting and easy is a simple experiment can be done in any lab. Let us consider the stationary waves now. These occur when two identical plane harmonic waves moving in opposite directions. Remember earlier we considered superposition of two waves in the same direction. Now we are considering two plane harmonic waves moving in opposite direction incident and reflected waves and they now they overlap. These two waves moving respectively towards right and left are psi 1 equal to a cos of omega t minus k x moving towards right that is positive direction of x axis and the other one psi 2 a cos of omega t plus k x plus alpha moving towards the other direction, negative direction of the x axis, then using the principle of superposition as before, the total displacement psi is given by psi 1 plus psi 2. Remember these displacements by themselves can be along the direction of x axis if these waves are longitudinal or they can be in the transverse plane if these waves are transverse. All right. So, psi is equal to psi 1 plus psi 2, which means a cos of omega t minus k x plus a cos of omega t k plus k plus k x plus alpha, which means 2 a 
cos of k x plus alpha by 2 multiplied by cos of omega t plus alpha by 2. This equation corresponds to what is called a stationary wave. Since there is no resultant progressive motion, there is no energy transfer to the right or left. That is why these waves are called stationary waves as against progressive waves which progress in some direction. Now, the amplitude of the stationary wave is 2 a cos of k x plus alpha by 2 which varies from point to point. Remember again the amplitude of a progressive wave is, is constant does not change does not vary from point, point to point, but here for a stationary wave we find the wave is a stationary, but we find that the amplitude of such a wave is not same for all values of x. The amplitude is 0 at places where this factor is 0 that is where k x plus alpha by 2 is equal to an odd multiple of pi by 2 taking n as integer values 1, 2, 3 which means for x equal to 2 n minus 1 pi by 2 minus alpha by 2 times lambda by 2 pi which gives 2 n minus 1 minus alpha by pi times lambda by 4. Thus, these values are our values of x 1 minus alpha by pi times pi by 4, 3 minus alpha by pi times pi by 4, 5 minus alpha by pi pi by 4 like this. The successive points we see at which the amplitude of the displacement is 0 or lambda by 2 distance apart. These points are known as displacement nodes. The particles at these points remain permanently at rest, they just do not move. It is very interesting phenomena. The waves are there in the region as a result of superposition of a direct and the reflected wave and we find these are the points which remain permanently at rest. The displacement is 0 for all time. You have a maximum amplitude where the cos factor is equal to plus minus 1 that is k x plus alpha by 2 is equal to n pi this pi 2 pi 3 pi and this gives x equal to n pi minus alpha by 2 times lambda by 2 pi which gives 2 n minus alpha by pi times lambda by 4. So, for x this gives the values 2 minus alpha by pi times lambda by 4, 4 minus alpha by pi lambda by 4 or 6 minus alpha by pi lambda by 4 like this. These points having maximum amplitude are again lambda by 2 distance apart. These are known as displacement antinodes. These are the points where the amplitude is maximum which is equal to 2 a. Remember a is the amplitude in the individual waves and at anti nodes the amplitude is 2 a and 2 a consecutive anti nodes as I said are separated by lambda by 2. A node is separated by a distance lambda by 4 from its nearest anti node between two anti nodes there is a node similarly between two nodes there is an anti node now there is another interesting feature consider again the stationary wave equation given above psi equal to 2 a cos of kx plus alpha by 2 times cos of omega t plus alpha by 2 we had this earlier the interesting thing is at time t given by this expression omega t plus alpha by 2 is equal to an odd multiple of pi by 2. The time dependent cos factor is 0 and therefore, psi is 0 for all x all through for all values of all the particles are passing through their mean position simultaneously for all values of x psi is 0. What about their velocities at this incident? We find that those between first and second nodes 
I am leaving sec between second and third. So, the first and second nodes, third and fourth node, fifth and the sixth nodes etcetera, those in the alternate segments have their velocity in one direction. Similarly, those between second and third nodes, fourth and fifth nodes, sixth and seventh nodes, they have all their velocities in the opposite direction. It appears something like this, the region is just gets divided into segments by the nodes. All the particles in any one segment between any two consecutive nodes are in the same phase. All of them pass through their mean positions at the same time and have their velocities in the same direction. They pass through their mean positions at the same time and in the same direction, all of them are in the same phase. Then those in the adjacent segment are in the opposite phase. This means if the particles in one segment are going towards right, all those in the adjacent segment are going towards left at the same time. Okay, now we consider another interesting thing, an experimental setup, Kunz tube experiment. This experiment early in the beginning it was devised to measure velocity of sound in different materials, but we are using it for a different purpose. It provides a very simple setup to visually demonstrate formation of nodes and antinodes in a stationary waves. The setup consists of a horizontal glass tube about a meter long and a few centimeters in diameter. At one end of it, an adjustable piston A is fitted, the other end is closed by a loosely fitted cardboard cap B within the tube, which is firmly attached to the metal rod B C. The rod is clamped in the middle at the point D, the tube itself is clamped on a horizontal heavy table. Now, before performing the experiment, the tube is thoroughly dried and then a small amount of lycopodium powder is scattered in the gap A B of the tube. The part D C of the rod is now rubbed with the resin cloth, rubbed along the length. By doing so, the rod is set up in longitudinal stationary vibrations with node in the middle at the point D, which is clamped and anti nodes at the two free ends at B and C. The disc B now vibrates forward and backward. You see the rod is in longitudinal motion. So, the disc B vibrates forward and backward due to which the air column inside the tube also vibrates with the same frequency, with the frequency of the rod. Now, the position of the piston A is adjusted in such a way that the air column in the tube resonates. Resonates means the natural frequency of the air column in the tube is same now as the frequency with which the rod is vibrating. The natural frequency of the air column can be adjusted by adjusting the position of the piston A and this is the experiment. So, the position of the piston A is now adjusted in such a way that the natural frequency of the air column becomes equal to the frequency of the rod and they resonate. and the air column sounds loudly to the note produced by the rod. This is indicated by the violent motion of the lycopodium powder which is there in the tube at various places along the tube. Now, we are, there are stationary waves in the tube. These waves are formed by the superposition of direct and reflected waves. They are reflected by the piston A. So, in C you have incident and direct waves of the same frequency, one traveling uh, in one direction, the other traveling in the opposite direction and the stationary waves are formed. Nodes and anti nodes are formed. The powder gets gathered in a small heaps at the nodes as there is no motion there and gets displaced from the anti nodes as shown in the figure. It is a very clear simple demonstration of the formation of nodes and anti nodes alternately and also the property that there is no motion at the nodes.
Now we come to the study of this phenomena of reflection, refraction and diffraction of sound waves. When a sound wave is incident upon a surface, a portion of its energy is absorbed by the surface and the remainder bounces back or becomes reflected from the surface. A perfectly hard surface will reflect back all of the energy. A perfectly hard surface really does not exist, but the idea is if this the harder the surface is more will be the reflection coefficient. This figure shows the incidence of a series of plane wave fronts on the reflecting surface A A prime. And the arrows normal to the wave fronts are rays which represent the direction of propagation are drawn to represent the incidence and the consequent reflection of the wave front. The angle of incidence theta i is equal to the angle of reflection theta r. Note that stationary wave patterns will occur from these reflections. Let us consider the sound field resulting from the reflection. Consider plane harmonic waves. The intersection of these waves along the normals to the reflecting surface constitutes the projection of the incident and reflected waves. From the concept of wave motion, the distance between crests, I mean between consecutive crests or consecutive compressions or consecutive rarefactions along the normal is like projected wavelength lambda prime, which is related to the wavelength lambda of the incident wave as follows. Lambda prime is equal to lambda divided by cos of theta i, which is equal to lambda sec of theta i. In obeying the laws of reflection, the reflected wave also produces a traveling wave with a projected wavelength also equal to lambda prime. Hence, where occurs along any normal line, the superposition of two waves traveling in opposite directions with wavelength lambda prime. From the concept of stationary waves, it can be inferred straight away that nodes and anti nodes occur along the normal line and the spacing between them needs only to be modified by the factor sec theta i. For the spatial case of theta i equal to 0 which means the normal incidence the nodal spacing reduces to the standard value lambda by 2 between any two nodes or any two anti nodes. As the angle of incidence increases the spacing between the nodes likewise increases and in the limit theta i equal to pi by 2 there is no reflected wave and thus the stationary wave field vanishes. The phenomena of sound wave reflection finds many applications. See the time it takes for a sound wave pulse to travel from a transducer at sea level to the ocean bottom and for the echo to travel back gives a measure of depth of the water. Further, comparison of the spatial characteristics of the reflected wave with those of the original generated waves provides in ample measure the geological composition of the ocean bottom. For example, the occurrence of silt or rock or sand or coral and so on. Reflected sound is also used in an analogous way by geologists to gauge the depth and composition of stratified layers in the earth crust to locate the occurrence of oil, natural gas or mineral deposits. Let us now consider refraction. This phenomena is more familiar in optics than in acoustics. Here the direction of the advancing wave front is bent away from the state line of travel. Refraction occurs as a result of the difference in the propagation velocity as the wave travels for one medium to a different medium. In the optical situation, refraction occurs rather suddenly. If the wavelengths are very small, when the light waves cross the sharp interface between the atmosphere outside 
and say gloss at the surface of a lens because light travels with slower speed in glass than what it does in air. At audible frequencies of sound waves, the wavelengths are so long that refracting apparatus would have to be extremely large in order to render observable acoustic refractions. This picture is very similar to what one have in optics. The propagation is from medium 1 to medium 2. Velocity in medium is V1, then velocity in the second medium is V2. The refracted ray moves away from the normal or towards the normal is really determined whether the velocity V2 is more or less relatively. Basically, the basic structure is essentially the same. The basic law of refraction sin theta incident divided by V1 is equal to sin theta refraction divided by V2. Theta incidence is, is the angle of incidence, theta area refract is the angle of refraction, V1 is the speed of sound in medium 1, V2 the speed of sound in medium 2. The above relation is analogous to the Snell's law for light refraction. See the analysis of acoustic refraction does not usually figure prominently. We most of the time we really do not bother very much about it in acoustic studies. But we cannot overlook the fact that zones of severe temperature difference and thereby of severe velocity difference do occur in the atmosphere and oceans. When sound travels from zone to zone often across regions of severe temperature gradients, the direction of propagation changes measurably to an extent which cannot be ignored. For example, the surface of the earth heats up more rapidly than the atmosphere on a sunny day. The temperature of the earth close to the ground rises correspondingly. Now, as the speed of sound is higher in the warmer lower surface sound waves traveling horizontally are refracted upwards. Similarly, on a clear night the earth's crust cools more quickly and a layer of cooler air forms and bends the sound waves downwards towards the surface, towards the earth's surface. Thus, noise from an industrial plant, for example, would be refracted downwards at night and would seem louder to a homeowner residing near the plant than during the day when the upward refraction occurs. This is quite often the case. Let us now consider the diffraction of sound. This figure shows sound waves incident on a partial barrier. Some of the sound is reflected back, some continues onwards unimpeded and some of the sound bends or diffracts over the top. The barrier causes an acoustical shadow which is not defined sharply. Another example of diffraction is bending of sound around a building corner. We usually can hear voices on the other side of a wall that is approximately 3 meters or so. High. It is a wavelength dependent effect. The sound at lower frequencies, larger wavelengths tend to diffract over partial barriers more easily than the sound at higher frequencies. Moreover, the sharpness and extent of the sound zone behind the barrier depends on the relative positions of the source and the receiver. The closer the source is to the barrier, the longer is the shadow zone on the other side of the barrier and that is greater is the sound reduction. That is all we need to know about sound diffraction. So, we have come to the end of this lecture.